Hello, it's Tristan here from Zebra Invest, and today I've got a great video for you. If you've been looking at purchasing commercial property or mixed use property below market value, and you wanna work out how to add a whole load of value to it, then stay tuned. This is a property I agreed and purchased last year from November, and went out and saw it, and we managed to get it about 300,000 pound below the asking price, or well, below what it's worth. And what I'm gonna do is run through in this video how I found it, spotting a motivated seller, making two different offers. And the reason I made two different offers was that way we might be able to get them down on one. How we then got vendor finance, what the market value, the open market value of that property would be, how I then used uh, open market value lending so they put a lot less cash into the deal and how the purchase went through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump in and I'm gonna show you this property. You can have a look at it yourself see what you think of it and whether it would have been a property for you. So here we go, this is a property just over in Chedgrave. This is in a slightly bit further out of Norwich and Norfolk for me than usual. Um, but it's a beautiful property, uh, and it would have been a beautiful property with a whole load of um, shops and flats in it. So if you can jump in and take a look at this place, but as you go through it, you will see it had a total of eight shops. One of them here you can see was knocked together, so that's two in one. Um, and then there was four flats, um, as well as 13 garages. Um, this property you can see here had been hanging around on the market for quite some time. Usually property data just opens on the side and will let you know how long it on, but it had already been on the market for sale for over a year. They tried splitting it, selling it as individual different flats. But what I'd done was I'd actually gone into property data and used the um, search, and you can search by how big a property is, how large a property is on the pound per square foot compared to the average of the area. And this was coming in at about 100 pound a square foot, whereas the area was about 350 to 400 pound a square foot. So looking at it straight off the bat, I was like, well, this has got to be a discounted deal. The other bit I did was I jumped on Rightmove and I was looking at comparables. So what you can do, and I'll quickly show how you can do this yourself, is if you are looking for properties in an area, you can go and find commercial property just by using Rightmove and using the commercial section on the top right hand side here. And then once you jump into it, it works exactly the same as um, right move usually would. Um, you put in any sector, and then what you're gonna do, and then you just simply put in the area that you're looking in. So I had just put in Norwich, Norfolk, and then I then put in a surrounding area of say 15 miles, and you can see everything that's coming up around you. Um, and then I then kind of looked through to see what opportunities were around in my area. One of the best bits and simplest things that um, is not coming up here, um, and I just went through and then found those properties in the area and looked through it and found the one that I was interested in. So what I then did was we then, once I got that property, we then took a look at it and we thought, well, how can we add value to this property? Well, one of the bits is you need to realize what the property is and how it's getting its end value. So with commercial properties, you can see here, it's currently achieving 51,000 pounds, 324 pounds a year with potential for growth. And this is where it's important you know this. So commercial properties are valued based on their income. So if that income is low, as it is in this case, then it's not gonna get a really high end value. But if you can look at it and you think, well, we could add value to that property, we can asset manage is the way they call it in the commercial world, and we can improve the income of that property, then we're then gonna be able to lift the end value of the property. So what we looked at doing was improving the rent on the shops. So the shop rents across all of them range anything from about 267 pounds a month up to uh, a total of 550 pounds a month. And this is what got me thinking. Well, if they are achieving 550 pounds a month on some of the shops, but not on all of them, then I'm surely all the rest of them can pay about the same rate. So what we then went about and we agreed with the seller is that we'd actually approach all of the leaseholders in the building and put them onto new leases as the lease was renewed and put them onto five year leases. And this is very important. If you put them onto five year leases, lenders really like to see this with upward only rent reviews specified at two years. So in doing this, we've managed to improve all of those base rents quite significantly. The next thing you could do as well was with the flats. All the flats that are in the properties, they're all currently, apart from one, was occupied. One of them was rented to one of the people who runs a shop downstairs, so we haven't been able to improve that rent that much, but we do want to improve the standard of the living there to be able to increase the end value of that property. But we've got four flats there. With the flats that we've got there, 
we can actually work with the local council to be able to provide these properties as supported living. Um, there's a lady in our area called Maria. Maria is fantastic and Maria has got great contacts with supported living operators in the area and she's actually been able to put us in place to be able to get three sets of contracts in future to be able to rent and lease each of the flats upstairs. And in doing so, we're able to push the rents on those probably from about £650 a month and that's going to go all the way up to hopefully around about the £1,500 per property. And doing so, you can really see how you're sweating the asset and maximising the income that's coming there. And again, with all of the garages out the back of it, the rents on them ranged from about £22 a month to probably about £55 a month, when the average across Norfolk is sitting at probably about £80 to £150 a month. So what we then did is, as all of these um, garages, a lot of them were out of contract, we approached them and said, look, we realise you're storing your stuff here. Would you like to store here, keep storing it here and keep using it? The new rents on these are now going to be £80 a month. And what they're going to do is at the end of the first year, and we've got one year new garage agreements in each of them, those um, will automatically increase by 5% every year. So there's definitely an uplift where the previous owners haven't managed to put those uplifts in. And in doing so, we've really managed to improve and increase the rents. And you can see just by comparing all the figures there, it really pushes it up. So we managed to look at this property and realise that it's got a motivated seller just by the fact the amount of time that it was on the market. And at the time it was on the market, each of the flats had been listed separately. So you could really see that they were struggling to sell all of these units. Um, and what we then did was um, look and think about making two different offers. So when you look at making an offer on a property, you can do this in many different ways. Everyone's got a different idea. Um, but one of the ones that I try to do is usually put an offer forward that is a standard, straightforward offer, and it's usually the cheeky offer. But you could also put an offer forward through that is going to be roughly what they want. So what we did was we put an offer forward, and you can see the property was there for £800,000. It had originally been listed at £1.6 million. Um, but we went in and said, well, look, how about we offer you um, £700,000 We'll buy that using bridging finance and then we can pay you for the property. Or the other thing we could do is offer you £800,000, but on the day that we buy the property, you lend £100,000 back to us as the buyers and we'll then put what's called a second charge loan in place. And the idea of doing this is you can then get the £100,000 back, which would be enough cash really to be able to go in and refurbish those flats, pay most of the stamp duty and cover most of your costs. And then the idea being that once you've got those flats refurbished, put onto those longer term leases, and all the leases are now in place, the value of that property has really increased and you'll be able to refinance out with the lender at a higher rate. And that's exactly what we've done. So when we went out and we said to our broker, we used Simon at Funded Finance, he came out and had he came out, looked at all the figures on the property and said that yes, it should support a 1.1 million pound valuation based on what the, all the flats and all the properties are there. So we then went out and Vast Panel instructed a local valuer. The valuer went out to the property and they went around it and actually they said yes, in the current condition, we would say that this property is worth 1.1 million with those new leases in places for the shops and for the garages. That's without the flats having the rent, the rental uplifts done as well. And he turned and said, well, actually at the end of it, if you were to split the whole block into separate flats, separate shops, separate garages and sell them all separately, it's actually worth about 1.35 million. So you can see here at £800,000, it really is a bargain. It's just trying to make sure you can structure the deal and add that value on the way in. And working with the value was to tell them exactly what we want to do, how we want to lift it. It was the easiest way to do this. So hopefully this has given you a little bit of inspiration. There's plenty of property deals out there exactly like this that you can then head out and go and find yourself. Um, if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And if you've got any comments, please just drop them in the below.